Prince Patel here, the most charismatic man in sports and entertainment today. And I'm here for episode three of Prince Patel Speaks. And you know it's going to be pure and raw because that's the law on Prince Patel TV, baby. Let me introduce the belts. First of all, we got the beautiful IBF Continental title. That's a beautiful belt. You got the nice eagle hanging over it. And we got the the famous, the world famous African Boxing Union title held by many great fighters. Azuma Nelson being one, Prince Patel being another. The lists go on. Obviously, you have to be of African descent to fight for that. Uh, and then, uh, let me introduce this belt. The WBO African title. Now, we mentioned about the eagle on the IBF. You've got the lion on the WBO. Now, that's a beautiful, beautiful lion. One time, I actually was wearing this belt with these chains. And the... And the gold was in the lion's mouth. It was like the lion was trying to eat my gold. It's like the gold was eating gold. That That is literally a true story. No lies. Gold was eating gold. Imagine if I ate the Cuban. It would just be like a kilo heavier. Like a kilo of girth just straight on the belt. But yeah, they're, they're the belts that I'm going to be wearing today. I said on the last video of Prince Patel Speaks 2, I said I'll be answering some of the questions in the comments. And uh, I and I said I read every comment that's put in there. To be honest, I read everything. When I get DMs, except tweets, I read most of the stuff, well, most, the majority of the stuff. And basically, to touch upon the comments on episode 2, and if you haven't seen episode 2, you best make sure you go back watch episode two and if not just read the comments because if i'm honest there was a beef in episode two's comment section someone come on there and some other people shut him down quickly with some some interesting facts um now to actually talk about the questions asked someone asked me when am i going to be boxing next if i'm honest i'm hoping september's more realistic but I would like August. We're trying to pattern up something big, like a real big fight, and that should be in the UK. But we're trying to pattern it up at the moment, and whether it gets agreed, then we can get rocking and rolling. Um, another question was, how many times am I going to be out in 2021 due to these unprecedented times of corona? I would like to personally be out four times. Realistically, aiming for two now, might be three, but probably two, and they're both going to be for gold. Okay, so another another old question is that someone asked on the channel. Well, it wasn't even a question. It was it was an inquiry. A serious inquiry was made. Someone said it got a serious serious inquiry. They wanted to know if I was a serious geezer. Now I don't consider myself to be a serious geezer. But I consider myself to be a girthy geezer. Girthy in every aspect of the word. I um, hope that answers the person's question. And I think the final one wasn't really a question. It was more... I didn't really understand it. Someone said G-T-F-O-H. I think that's abbreviations for get the F out of here. Why would I get the F out of here on my own channel? You tuned into my channel and you're telling me to get the F out of here. If I'm brutally honest, what I think has happened there, what the prince thinks has happened there is this gentleman walked in on their partner. Their partner could be male or female. And he wasn't happy with his partner watching the video. It was probably at night when the when the partner was watching it. They was probably doing something to themselves and he got a little bit upset that his partner was watching the great one, the perfect one, the sexy one. And he just knew 
immediately he couldn't compete with greatness. So he decided to put a disrespectful comment. So like I said before, ever wanted to ask me a question, make sure you comment it and the prince in episode four will answer them. Let's get on to the card. Let's get on to the boxing on the weekend. Um, let's start with Christopher Lovejoy against Manuel Char. I don't know if it was for the WBA regular heavyweight title because when I watched the fight, I didn't see the referee with the all-important badges on the chest area. I didn't see him have the badges there. Yeah, so basically... When we, when I want to break that down, um, I don't think it was for the regular WBA heavyweight title. Um, I know that Christopher Lovejoy was managed or promoted by Don King. Everyone knows who Don King is. He's a very famous boxing promoter. Um, Lovejoy actually filed himself as bankrupt, was what I read, and managed to get himself out of a contract with Mr. Donald King, and he went to Germany. He tried doing a Prince Patel. He went to he went abroad. No team, no coach, no cut man on his own. He thought he could do a Prince Patel, um, but Prince Patel don't ever turn up seventy pounds overweight. Now Prince Prince is a girthy geezer, as as we've said before. I am a girthy geezer, but Never would I come in 70 pounds heavier than what I've last fought at. I don't know. I don't really understand the logic in Lovejoy's thingy. He filed himself bankrupt He to get out of a contract, apparently. He then goes into a fight. Well, probably the biggest fight. It was the biggest fight of his life, actually, because he had 19 wins, 19 KOs. Um, he was supposed to fight Dave Allen, I think, in the UK before. That fight fell through. Um... 19 wins, 19 KOs, but only one of them, I think, had a winning record. So, there's just a question mark on the record, but there's nothing wrong with that because when it's time to step up, if he ain't ready, that's down to him. But if he believes he's learning on, on his job doing that, that's up to him. But he would have got paid some decent money for that, I'm assuming, as a heavyweight. But I personally believe he took the fight for the money because it didn't look like he was even interested in trying to win when I watched the fight. It was... If I'm honest, it was quite embarrassing. Like I felt sorry for him. I felt bad for him because I know what it's like to go abroad without a team. And the fact that he didn't really attempt to win the fight, it, yeah, it, it was bad. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't good in my opinion. Uh, let's talk about the Lewis Neary Brandon Figueroa fight. And if I'm honest, when I was campaigning, that was at Super Bantam, but when I was campaigning at Bantamweight, Lewis Neary was a Bantamweight at the time. I used to look at that and I used to think, it's a hard, hard fight if I had to fight him. Um, obviously, we never engaged into fisticuffs. Um, uh, he moved up a weight, I moved down a weight. And if I'm honest, um, I rate Lewis Neary very highly. I think he's got good boxing ability. And I think he's, I think he's, I think he can punch as well. He has good volume himself. But he fought Brandon Figueroa. Now, Brandon Figueroa is a pressure fighter, but he looks like... um doesn't really look like someone who can fight facially. Like You wouldn't look at him thinking, this geezer's a fighting man, but obviously looks can be deceiving. He, um, him, and, him and Lewis Neary fought a super bantamweight. Now, that was, if I'm honest, the whole weekend. I... I I wanted to watch the Love Dre against Manuel Char fight for banter reasons, just for purely for the bants, but for actual boxing and for entertainment. Well, the, the Char and Love Dre was for entertainment purposes as well, but for the wrong reasons. Um, but the actual boxing and boxing entertainment purposes, the Neary Figaro fight for me was by far one of the better fights. And in fact, it's one of the fights that I've been looking forward to in recent time. Um, just talk about it. Uh, Figueroa's obviously a pressure fighter. Um, both of them met exchanging some good combinations. Both landing big shots. Both giving big shots. Both showing good good stuff. Really, um, I felt I felt that Neary normally when he hits you, you stay hit and you go. Against Figueroa, he was catching Figueroa and he didn't look like he was hurting Figueroa. 
it just felt like Figaro was the bigger guy. Even though Neary's failed to make Bantamweight a few times, it just felt to me that Figaro is he's super Bantam. He's now a unified world champion. But I don't think he would be uh, a Bantamweight for much longer. And he's now going to add another belt to his um, two belts if he beats Stefan Fulton, which I don't think he does. I think Fulton will be too much for him. Like, if you compare Neary and Fulton, I think Fulton's a lot bigger than Neary. I just feel that um, Neary was fighting at the wrong weight, really, if I'm honest. I think he's a very effective bantamweight. But I just feel um, Super Bantam was a little bit out of his depth. Now, um, let's talk about the Sky Sports card. Now, I'm not the only person that thought the Sky Sports card on the weekend was a joke. And I mean this with the utmost respect towards the fighters fighting on the card. If you broke down the um, the card itself and you looked at the odds, um, the odds was disgraceful. Very much disgraceful. You pretty much knew who was going to win before the contests took place. Um, there actually was an upset, though, in all fairness. Um, in one of the fights, you had um, Gamal Yafai, a European champion. Um, he fought a gentleman called Jason Cunningham. Jason Cunningham from Doncaster. Um, Jason Cunningham just beat him in every department, in my opinion. Um, Yafai come in with slow feet, slow head movement, um, predictable punches, and... Um, Cunningham just, I, be, I believe, is just one step ahead in each department. Um, landing the sharper counter punches, um, had better foot movement than him, and dropped your five three times in the process of winning the fight. Um, Cunningham's also lost to Gamal's older brother, older but smaller brother. Um, so the family must have known a bit about. Cunningham, but Cunningham beat him. Cunningham beat him fair and square, and um, done well for himself. Um, but if I'm honest, like this is no disrespect to Cunningham. His last three fights was all against gentlemen with losing records. His um, last time he went in the ring with someone with a winning record was two years ago. Um, he beat someone who was eleven and one at the time. Um, now that on. To the naked eye, it doesn't look like ideal preparation for a European title fight. But we don't know what he's doing in the gym. Now, sometimes when people read into records, you can't... They, they, they say, oh, who's he boxed? Who's he done against? Obviously, that's where you do your major learning is in the ring normally. But he's in, his, in the last two years, he'd only fought gentlemen with losing records. Obviously, in the gym, he must have been doing some other stuff. He must have been sparring other guys. He must have been doing stuff with other 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 high caliber fighters because he looked he looked very very good on the weekend against um Gamal Yafai. Um another fight that happened on the card was uh Larone Richards against Giovanni Di Corrales or Do Corrales Corrales or something. Corrales was a former WBA world champion. Um a very inactive thirty six year old in recent times though, but he was a former world champion. And um, he just looked like it was weird. It was like he couldn't get out of the first gear, and Larone was just sort of like touching him up a little bit and moving out the way. And just, just I, look, I know I'm supposed to give a review to the fight, but it's hard to give a review to fights that I'm not stimulated by. I'm not entertained by. I I, I didn't appre I don't appreciate fight sometimes when it's just boring granted this, he, he done what he had to do to win and I respect that and he's he's pretty much picked up every title on the way to winning the European title but I just ain't entertained I just ain't I just ain't it, it isn't something I'm gonna be honest I didn't even watch the fights live that's why my reviews sometimes come out really late because I don't even watch them live because I, I, I have to, I watched the Neary fight live the Brandon Figueroa against Neary fight but some fights, I don't even watch them live because I just ain't stimulated by them. And then you know you're going to have poor commentary. At least when I'm watching the Neary Figaro fight, it's, it's American commentary. UK lot, they talk stuff up and half the stuff they're saying don't even make sense. It's just my opinion, though. Just my opinion. And last but not least, on the Sky Sports card, you had um, 
fan favourite in Joshua Boatti against... What was his name? Um, Dos Santos. I don't even know his first name. I just remember it being Dos Santos or Santos or something. Um, I think he was a French man. Um, now, it, I remember Josh Boetti very well from the amateurs. Um, I remember winning two CYPs and he got to the final both both them times. And he then, I think that's six months later, he ended up going, we ended up both going in the senior ABAs. He won the senior ABAs that year and I got to the final. So like we shared three national finals together and in them three national finals, he he won one, I won two. So I rem I know I know him from when we was younger. We sort of grew up in the amateur scene together, um, and I like Josh Buetti. Um, I got on with him, but my 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 opinions have got to be brutal and it's got to be honest because obviously on Prince Patel you get the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and because um, that's the law, it is the law on Prince Patel TV. Um, so yeah, when I was when when I was watching well, when I watched the repeats of the fight, um, I didn't even really have to watch the fight because I kind of knew what was going to happen anyway. And that's not because I think Josh Boetti is a great fighter, which he is. It's just because of the opposition he's fighting. He's fighting a guy, and there's no disrespect to Josh because he obviously doesn't match make his fights. He has people who match make it for him. He's fighting a guy who had fifteen wins, no losses. On paper, sounds amazing. Well, then that 15 wins, no losses, he had one boxer with a winning record. Now, had that been me, and you know what? Let me just touch upon it more. He's only ever done eight rounds once, and that was against an 18 wins. Sounds good, 18 wins, but 38 losses. So the guy had only boxed one guy with over uh, past six rounds, and it was against a guy with 18 wins, 38 losses. Come on, man. And and in his whole 15 wins, he only beat one guy with a winning record. If I myself um, approached, because he won that, with, he boxed the, for the WBA belt, but WBA International, if I had approached the WBA with someone like that, they would have rejected me. They would, they would have told me not to insult them with the opponent, and they would have just said, pick someone better, but... This is what I talk about when, when I do my things. I'm doing it the hard way. I'm having to go abroad um, on smaller shows. And I'm having to pick better opponents. Just my opinion, though. Um, but nevertheless, um, Josh Bowetti dealt with him in, 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 good, in good manner. Knocked him out. He's a good fighter. Um, he'll be pushing for world titles very soon. Um, and I actually want him to do well. I want Josh to do well. But... My overall review on the Sky Sports card is it's it's not good. It's it's bad. It's it's bad for boxing. This is when you had Eddie Hearn talking about two weeks ago or well, three weeks ago now, saying boxing can't afford to have, in his words, shit fights. Um your card on the weekend was a prime example of what you're advocating not to have. And that was shit fights. Um and it hurts me because I'm going abroad and I'm doing it the hard way and these people are doing it. They're getting to fight less opposition on TV and you guys are subjected to watching that when you could be watching The Great One, the most electrifying man in sports. And I know for a fact people in the UK would prefer to see someone like me on TV than the majority of the guys that are on TV at the moment and that's a fact. That is a fact. That's the reason why my fight when I was fighting in Ghana on the 27th of March and that was the same weekend Dillian White fought against um, uh, Povetkin in his rematch. There was no other fight that weekend that was more spoken about than my fight. There's a reason why people are talking about my fight and then it's not even in the UK. It was in the middle of Africa and they're not even talking about the rest of the fights that happened in the UK. There are fights that happen in the UK and and they're talking about me fighting in the middle of Africa. People, The masses want to see Prince Patel fighting on UK TV and that's why it's very important that my next fight gets signed up. Because it will be on UK TV and I will be laying the smack down like no one else can. 
I think that wraps up this video now. Make sure you like, you comment and you subscribe.